Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored, Lord. We will come fellowship your presence, hear your word. We thank the Lord for the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus above every name. Thank you, Lord, for our salvation, deliverance, and protection all through Jesus Christ. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, for our nation. We speak peace to our country, create and declare our nation's righteous nation, cleansed and covered by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, we're having a mighty revival in our nation right now. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness then that you come. Thank you, Lord, for all those missionaries out there who's preaching Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, protecting them and meeting all their needs and using us to be a blessing to them. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all the body of Christ. That each and every believer becomes baptized in the Holy Spirit, be taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, and going forth and ruling and reigning in Jesus' name, in this life. And Lord, I thank you for anointing me today <clears throat> that I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utter soul of the ghost. And I pray for all those Lord, as we hear your word and hear from the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of your word and let the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's over Bibles over to the book of Isaiah and we'll read some divine healing scriptures and just see where the Lord takes us. Now, here in Isaiah, the Bible says here in chapter 53, now we'll start in verse 4. Surely it borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words also are translated griefs and sorrows as sickness and pains throughout the Old Testament. So I often just read it this way or quote it this way. Surely bore my grief, sickness, carried my sorrows, pains. Yet we did esteem and strength and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now let's go over here to, to Matthew. Matthew, by the Holy Spirit, is going to refer to this, what Isaiah said and, fore, and foretold about, prophesied. So here in Matthew, chapter 8, now verse 16 and 17. When he was come... They brought unto Jesus many that was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits of his word and healed all that were sick. That it might fulfill which spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now please, let's go over here to 1 Peter, like they're heading towards the book of Revelation. Way over to the right, in 1 Peter chapter 2. Now this, the Holy Spirit through Peter, puts our healing, the church, the body of Christ, in the past tense. So the Bible says here in verse 24, Who his own self bare our sins, his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unrighteous, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, these are God's promises and facts that belongs to every person. We read there in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, that lets us know that Jesus not only took our sins, but also took our sickness and diseases. And as believers, you know, this is something what you may have challenges with, anyone would. But what we want to do is resist those challenges and temptations to doubt God's word and just keep ourselves our minds on God's Word and keep the Word coming out of our mouth. This is one of the reasons why it's important for you and I every day to spend time praising God, reading our Bible, but not only that, reading promises in God's Word. Take them, they're called exceedingly great and precious promises. And read those to ourselves out loud, quote them to ourselves, begin to see ourselves. For, for instance, healing. Scripture like Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, and Matthew 8, 17, and 1 Peter 2, 24. And use of those. To, to defend ourselves against any kind of physical challenge or mental challenge, but also keeping ourselves reassured, fully confident, fully persuaded that we are what His Word says we are. You know, a good uh, testimony about this is found over in Romans chapter 4 about Abraham and Sarah. Now the scripture says here, we'll pick up here in verse 17. Now the Bible says here in verse 17, talk about what God said about Abraham. As it as written, I made thee the father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according that was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he Abraham considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet dead to Sarah's womb. He staggered not to promise God through unbelief, but strong of faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded, that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Now think about this. I mean, the time this baby shows up, he's 99 years old and Sarah's 91. They're almost 100 years old. And they got this promise from God, so shall thy seed be. And they took that and believed God for that. Now every day it goes by, they're getting older. It started out they can't have a child anyway. It's impossible in the natural. But the Bible says with men it's impossible, not with God, but God, all things are impossible. And that's what we have to focus on. Is what God's word says. And there'll always be challenges. Satan's gonna do everything he can to talk us out of believing in God's word as believers. He did everything he could to keep the church ignorant of what belongs to the, the believer in Christ Jesus. But then when the person, the believer, begins to find out what Jesus did through his death, burial, and resurrection, that we're the righteous of God in Christ, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus, 
that we're no longer unworthy because we've been made worthy by the blood of Jesus, not because of performance, but simply because of the grace of God. And by the blood of Jesus, what qualifies us to receive anything that the Father has that belongs to us or he's given to us through the epistle letters, knowing that Jesus re uh, redeemed us, purchased our redemption, and gave it to us. It's free. And one of the benefits we have is divine health and also divine healing, along with divine protection, divine prosperity coming from God. And he's given us all these blessings belong to us. You know, remember there in, um, in, first, in Second Peter, Chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says that he's given us, God has, given us all things that pertain to the life of godliness, to acknowledge him that called us to glory and virtue, whereby he given us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these, in other words, by these exceedingly great and precious promises, we might be partakers by nature, having escaped the corruption through this world, that's in this world through lust. Well, now he's already, God's already given us all things pertaining to life of godliness, like God has already given the world, Jesus Christ. Well, that's why we have John 3, 16 in scripture like that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but everlasting life. And God showed us his love in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. That's why he gave the world Jesus. All a person has to do is receive Jesus Christ as the Lord. And when they do, they become the righteous of God in Christ. They become complete. They become a right standing with God, justified by the blood of Jesus. Now, we go back here to Abraham. Ab Abraham's name had been Abram and Sarah. And God changed their names to Abraham and Sarah. Now, have this all, why was this? Because by Abraham saying his name, he's actually calling those things of being Azura. He's saying, I'm the father of many nations. Ah, you know, imagine saying that around your friends. They happen to know you don't have any kids. Your wife, look how old she is. Well, as old as she was, she still got this baby. This miracle came forth. Now, how'd they do this? They went by what God said. And they got the place that they were fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. You know, Scott, the man that had leprosy, if thou will, that can make me clean, Jesus said to Jesus in Matthew chapter 8. And Jesus said, I will. He answered the man's question. See, the man apparently believed that Jesus could or God could heal. I mean, a lot of people, probably all of us at one time or another, believe that. You know, oh, I believe God can do anything. Boy, wait, stand. I'd say that when I wasn't even saved. I believe God can do anything. But you see, now what Jesus did, he said to him, I will be thou clean. So he answered the question of the man and said, I believe you can if it's your will. Well, Jesus said, I will be thou clean. And then Jesus told him to go show himself the priest. Now this guy doing what Jesus said to do, he's, he's you know, stepping out in faith to do this. But think about this. The man thought and believed that, that Jesus or God could do this, could heal. Now, probably most every person that believes in God, believes God can do anything. Oh, yeah, you know, again, like when I was a sinner, I would stand up for God. So, yeah, God can do anything. Well, okay, that's good, you know. If it's his will, now that's the clincher. See, that goes, well, you know, you never know what God will do. We, do, we can know what, he, what he'll do if we know his promises. Now, what we want to do, you and I want to do, we want to get ourselves reassured that this belongs to us. And we're talking about healing, so... Healing belongs to us. And that may take some time. Depends how much doubt and unbelief we've got to lead and how much religion we've had in us. You know, thank God for a new computer, a laptop, or a new cell phone. I mean, you know, they'll bring out new ones, you know, every year. Upgrade. But then you got to go to the cell store to get this uploaded and everything else. And there are no problems. It's just, you know, and, <laughs> the last time I was there was for a few hours. But anyway... But in, so there, there's things that, you know, that they, you, you may want deleted from your phone or from your computer, especially if you borrowed your, someone gave you a computer and they got all their stuff on there. Well, that's got to be deleted out of there. And that's not going to, you know, that's not, that takes some time. Well, a lot of us had religion taught to us. And so when we did receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, everything we heard about what Jesus did for us is usually brand new. And like First Peter 2, 24, saying, by his stripes are healed. That was brand new to me. Along with every other scripture. Well, now what am I got to do now? Now I got to start deleting all that stuff. Well, God can do it if it's his will. Well, if he promised this, this is, God didn't make a promise and not back it up. He doesn't make promises and then it's not his God, it's not his will to do it. Or it's not his will that we have it. He promises these things. He told us here that himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness by his straps or healed. Now the challenge is going to be to that is if we've got religion and doubt and unbelief inside of us. And also if you're facing symptoms, 
I mean, with some kind of pain or some, some kind of symptom you got no, going on in your life, and then you hear about by his stripes you're healed and you're endeavored to receive your healing, well, the enemy's going to do all he can to keep the pressure on you to, to let you look, go by the feelings, go, go by how you feel the pain or how you see the problem, and try to talk out of God's blessings. This is one of the reasons why we want to keep God's word before our eyes. You know, back over here, stay there and or hold your finger, Romans, please, so we'll come back to that. But go back here, please, to Proverbs 4. Now, here's where our job comes in. In Proverbs chapter 4, now, <clears throat> excuse me, begin at verse 20. Now, Lord, Lord said, My son or my child, attend to my words. Incline there my sayings. Let them not depart in eyes. Keep them in the heart. Now, why does God want to do this? Now, he goes on and says here in verse 22, For they, my words, they are life to those who find them and help all their flesh. That's why every day you want you and I want to be finding God's promises. Go into our Bible, and that's why it's good to highlight scriptures in our Bible, especially promises. So we can go back and flip page to page and read those promises ourselves. Or if we haven't printed off, man, that's great too. But see them highlighted in our Bible. Go back and reread it to ourselves on a daily basis. What's that gonna do? That's gonna readjust our mind because we're thinking of, we may be thinking about doubt and unbelief and symptoms and circumstances going on in our life. So what we're going to do is go back to the Word of God and remind ourselves. That's one of the reasons why we won't keep God's Word before our eyes, keep God's Word coming in our ears. And, of course, like <clears throat> Joshua and Joshua 1 verse 8, we're to keep God's Word in our mouth. Now, by doing so, speaking the Word, reading the Word of God out loud, keeping our eyes on God's Word, reading God's promises, help readjust ourselves every day for the challenges that we're faced with. Now, please, let's go back here to uh, Abraham now. So here in this in this chapter 4, verse uh, 17 says, As is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Now, as far as God's concerned, it's a done deal. It's, if, if he'll get his man, Abraham, to believe it, then he got this miracle. Now, how's God going to get Abraham to believe? He gives him his word. So so, so that I see be. I've made thee father of many nations. By saying that, now Abraham has just heard from God. Now he's got something to believe. He's got what God's word says. And he's got a choice. He can choose to believe it or not believe it. But thank God he chose to believe it. Now how did he do this? He went by what God said. He took his new name, called himself Abraham. Maybe like you and I calling ourselves righteous, calling ourselves delivered when we're faced with something, calling ourselves healed. We're saying what the word says. The truth is God's word. Like Jesus said it in John 17, 17, thy word is truth. So no matter what else is said, the tr what trumps everything is God's word. And by Abraham take, a willing to take the new name, calling himself Abraham, by just speaking his name, he's calling those things that be not his word. He's saying, I'm the father of many nations. I got a bunch of kids. Now, his body's dead in reproduction, and so Sarah's in reproduction. So now how did they get these to come alive? They went by what God said. In a hopeless situation, with no hope in the natural, with their bodies being dead, they took what God promised. And over the process of time, they stayed fast with it. They became fully persuaded. And one thing they also did is they also kept giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. And that's how they got this miracle baby. They took what God said. Now, what we want to do as believers is always find out what did God say about the situation? What did he put in his word? His promises is his will for our life. And God doesn't make promises, and then it's not his will for someone. And that's where confusion came into the body of Christ, because, you know, someone came along and told somebody God wants them to be prosperous, or some preacher did, and God wants them to have good health. Well, they, right away, you think about somebody that isn't, or somebody that didn't get it, and you think, well, what about them? Well, first of all, that's something we need to give a big leave it alone, because you kind of get over a judgmental area in that area, or condemnation or guilt or anything else that's from the enemy. So what we want to do is, you know, regardless of what happened, that's terrible when it comes to negative things. A thousand may fall on one side, 10,000 on our right hand, but keep ourselves motivated by those promises. And every day, not accepting the bait that Satan throws out. He's always switching bait, throwing it out to us. What about this? What about that? Comes to all of us, comes to our mind. What about your circumstances? You have, you've been reading these scriptures forever. You don't even have it. Well, look how long Abraham stayed there. I mean, if one thing about it, if he just one day just gave up, he could have just got up one day and said, okay, I've done this long enough, I'm done. No, thank God he didn't do that. <laughs> Wouldn't have this miracle baby. No, it's taking God's prayer. Not easy to do because we get everything else that challenges us. 
But that's, we're called to, have, you know, we're like soldiers. We're called to fight the good fight of faith. We're told, having done all, stand, stand. How are we going to stand on God's word? Well, by holding fast our profession of faith, by decreeing and declaring in Jesus' name that we are what we, we've already received the greatest miracle. If we're born again, we've already received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Now we can receive anything else from God. But you see, when it comes to physical things, emotional things, and financial things, well, those are things you just see. You know, you can't see the new birth. You know, you tell someone you're born again, you, you know, they, they may see you change your character, but, they, you know, that's a spiritual thing. Like Jesus would say to someone, thy sins forgive, they rise, take, take out of bed and walk. Well, telling some of their sins are forgiven, I mean, what proof we have about that? You take it by faith. Well, same as with rise, take out of bed and walk, we take it by faith. One can be more challenging because you see. Well, now what Abraham did is he took these promises, what God said. As written, I made the Father of nation, so shall thy seed be, and stood on that, and took his name, and told people's name. I mean, he could have said, you know, look, I'm going to wait till we have this baby, and I'll tell people this about this. No, no, he had to do it up front. And that's what we do as believers. We continually agree and clear what God's word says to ourselves, to, about ourselves. And that's, this goes back to those promises, like we read there in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24. You know, they're, they're even more than promises, they're facts. This is what God says about us. <clears throat> now that's what we want to, when it comes to healing, latch onto those. Because that, that 1 Peter 2, 24 puts our healing in the past tense, that by his stripes ye he were healed. See, so often, many of us were waiting to get healed, and then we're going to believe God for it. No, we step out. Father God, I'm going to thank you that your word says, by straps, I'm healed. And I just say, I, I thank you, Lord, for this. I'll tell you, 1 Peter 2, 24, those last six words, they've really been attacked. It's like in Mark chapter 16, speaking of tongues really got attacked. <laughs> you know, Boy, praise God, you know, some Christians really come against those verses. Well, that's okay. You know, I mean, it's not okay to do that, but that, you know, that's okay. Don't let that affect you. You just stay focused on the Word of God. This is why God's told us here in Proverbs here, keep the Word before our eyes and keep the Word in our ears. And like we, you know, referred to there earlier in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, keep the Word in your mouth. Now, that's going to keep us busy. If we keep God's Word before, before our eyes, keep our ears listening to God's Word, and keep our mouth speaking God's Word, hey, that's going to take care of a lot because that gives our mind something to think about, gives our eyes something to look at, and gets our mouth something to talk about. Because it's kind of easy to lose focus of what God's Word says. I mean, we go to church all of our life. I mean, thank God for that. But, you know, this is everyday stuff. We start the day out with God's promises and get ourselves prepared for the day so we can face all the challenges that we may face with, be faced with, getting ourselves reassured. And what Abraham do and Sarah do, they got fully persuaded. They became fully persuaded. See, not partially. Well, I believe God can do it if he wants to do it. They never would have the baby. Well, if God wants to do it, he'll just do it. His good time. I mean, I just believe if you're just, if you're going to have it, you'll, he'll, you'll just get it. That's not what the Bible teaches. No, the, we take it by faith. The kingdom of heaven served violent, violent, take it by faith. It's the enemies that try to get us in a, in a lazy situation and procrastinate and just leave everything up to God. No, he, he's already made the promises. He's already given us his written word. So now it's up to us to believe those promises. That's our responsibility as a believer, as a believer, is get ourselves fully persuaded that we believe the promises. And that's a challenge. And it's going to be challenged every day. So what we want to do is we don't want to coast through life. We don't want to just settle and tolerate with problems going on and thinking about, you know, when's the last time I saw a miracle? No. That's, those are all things from the enemy. Because he'll just bring it up to you. Well, when's the last time you even saw somebody heal? When's the last time you even got a miracle? See, who get tried to heal? That's bait. He's trying to get you to go down that path, get you off what the Word said. Keep God's word before our eyes. They're frontlets for our eyes to keep us going forth. You know, in Central Park, the, you, a lot of people take the, you know horseback uh, with a carriage and go through Central Park. Yeah, beautiful, you know. Well, what those horses, you know, they, they put those blinders on there, so on the cabs going around and all the traffic there, that horse doesn't see that until a car gets in front of it. Well, what's that? So we'll get the, ho the horse spooked or get the ho horse distract his attention. Well, we see, with God's Word, if we'll keep our eyes on God's Word and keep our ears listening to God's Word and keep our mouth speaking God's Word, that's going to help you and I stay focused. Because the enemy is always throwing out stuff to challenge us to lose focus of what Jesus said or what Jesus has done for us or what God's promised and what belongs to us. He wants to, Satan wants to do is get us to get off the Word. That's why Jesus taught us in the Gospels, uh, in each one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he said, when you hear the Word, Satan comes immediately. 
and he comes to take the word out. Now, what's he going to use? He used affliction, persecution, cares of this world, deceitfulness, riches, and lust of other things. And if they enter in, they can choke the word, and the word become unfruitful. Those are weeds. Again, you know, the Satan sows. What about this? What about that? Yeah, but. What if? And on and on and on. It really affected the children of Israel because, you know, Caleb and, and, and Joshua couldn't stop this. The people just spun out of control with doubt and unbelief because they went by what the ten spies said. The ten spies said, we can't. And Caleb said, in other words, he's saying, yes, we can. Let's go now. In Numbers chapter 13. And Caleb stilled the people and said before that, I mean, let's go up at once, for we're well able to overcome them. Now all they have to do is just go keep on marching, head to where we're supposed to. They'll keep acting in faith, heading in that direction. But oh no, the ten spies persuaded, persuaded all the children of Israel. How many people out there? I don't know, but you know, there's a batch of them. And they went by what the ten said instead of the two. Because the two, Caleb and Joshua, they got theirs. It took, only took like 40 years, but they still got their blessing. What they did, they held fast to what they said. And like Caleb said, I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago. Give me the mountain. He's still talking the same way. He's 85 years old. Then he talked when he was 40 years old. He couldn't persuade the people. He was unable to persuade the people to believe God, what God said. He'd, you know, he's a preacher. He's telling, trying to convince the people, let's believe God. Let's believe what God said. He gave us his land that flows with milk and honey. Never let you. But the other Ten said, yeah, but what if? They're saying, never yet, nevertheless, there's giants, there's walls. They kept keeping the people to look at the problems. Scared the people off of believing God's word, what God has said. They're not thinking about what God's done for them. They got so spun out of control and whacked out over this. They said, would to God we go back to Egypt? They'd spent over 400 years there. How soon did they forget how bad it was over there? And they're going to get another captain. This one, God stepped in. No, you're not. You got Moses. You're going to stay. You got, this is who I gave you. No, they're going to get another, someone else to lead them. And then they want to stone them for talking positive, Caleb and Joshua. No, that's, you know, people come against confessions of faith. Yeah, that's all right. Love everybody else. But you keep your mouth and my mouth going on God's word. So what are we going to do with God's word? We're going to keep God's word before our eyes. Those promises. All the Bible is God's word from Genesis to Revelation. But in there are exceedingly great and precious promises. And that's what liberates us if we grab a hold of them and believe them on our own time. We can't wait for the preacher to do this for us. This is something that we do ourselves. We take time every day, read those promises, keep ourselves built up on them. You know, get our minds thinking on God's word, our, guy, our eyes looking on God's word, or in our mouth speaking God's word. And start the day out that way. You know, but like the scripture said, put on the whole armor of God. Just be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're going to face, you know, this enemy every day. So we're going to face this enemy that we have that comes against us. It's who Satan is. Then we're going to face him with God's word. We're going to face him by acting in faith. We're going to face him by stepping out and acting upon God's word. This is one of the reasons why we're taught in James to be a doer of the word of God, not just here only. It's just easy to be a hearer only. That's like the man that both those men heard the word in Matthew chapter 7, beginning of verse 24. But one took the time to build their life on God's word. The other one did. And st the same storm came to both of them. And took one out, and the other one still standing after the storm went by. What was the difference? He took time. The one that was wise took time to build his life on God's word. The storm's come. But the key is people become storm-proof. We're going to do that with promises. We're going to do that by keeping ourselves built up. And that's why we're taught in James 1, 22, but be a doer of the word of God, not a hearer only. See, it's easy to be a hearer. I got born again in Amen Church. <laughs> it's all new to me. You got to realize I, I, I started out, I, I was raised in a church where no one said anything. Like, you know, I'm not, we didn't say amen or nothing. It just You just sit there and let the priest or minister teach or whatever until it was all over with. But any, and unless they told you to say, let's say the Lord's Prayer. So I go to this church, this Pentecostal, say amen. I think someone could, could have got up and read the calendar and someone said amen. They just they just engaged their mouth. Many times they're saying amen. I don't even think they even knew what they were saying amen to. They heard someone else say, say amen, 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 you know, amen, amen, amen. Well, they were constantly talking, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let the first hold their peace. Let, they, let that minister get done where you can, you can focus on. That's distracting other people, too. That, you know, you follow what your minister wants to done anyway. But some, you know, some seem to want it. But the point is, uh, you know, we need to listen to God's word and speak God's word and keep God's word before our eyes, those promises. 
Again, they're called exceedingly great and precious promises. That's what liberates us, is the promises. That's what keeps us be able to get through the storms and trials that come, is the promise of God. By just holding fast to our confession of faith, Father God, I think I'm what your word says I am. You said I can do all things through Christ. You said the joy of the Lord is my strength. You said I have the mind of Christ. You said I've been redeemed the curse of the law. You said by his stripes I'm healed. You said he'd supply all of my needs. You said you wish above all things that I prosper. You said I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. You said I was the righteousness of God in Christ. You said I'm more than a conqueror. You said that I'm a king and priest. You said, and just keep saying what God said, and thanking God for what his word says about us, and praising God and giving glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Father, that by your stripes I'm healed, because himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. And I just praise and I thank you, Father God. You're meeting all of my needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I thank you, Father God, and I praise your holy name. And just talk that way, by praising God and thanking God. This is what Abraham, he just kept giving glory to God. He's not thanking God for the problem. He's glorifying God for what God said about him and what he's going to have. And by doing so, well, they got their baby. They got their miracle. How'd they do this? They went by what God said. Now, that's why it's one thing to start that way, but it's another thing to keep ourselves going that way. It's easy to say, oh, I'm going to step out on this. I'm going to start tithing or giving or whatever. Okay, and then staying with it, you know. Those always be those challenges or start out believing God for healing and then making sure that we stay with it. We're going to do that. What's going to help us so much is those promises. Every day, going back, open up our Bible, reading those promises ourselves. Taking those promises and keeping them before our eyes, keep those promises in our mouth, and keep God's word coming out of our mouth. Hey, it's, some, it's a challenge, but hey, praise the Lord. It's sure, worth it. it's sure worth what God has given us to take advantage of and receive it and activate that covenant God has given us by speaking God's word. That covenant we have is voice activated. So let's you and I just keep saying what the Word of God says about us. Amen? Father God, I pray today. I thank you, Lord, for each, each person. able to watch today. Thank you, Lord, all their needs are met. They're healed, delivered, and redeemed in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. Or maybe you know you've never done. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ. It's called being saved. It's called being born again. The Bible tells you in Romans chapter 10 how to do this. I'm going to read these scriptures. If you're not sure you've done this or not, let's do it today. Or you know, if you know you've never received Jesus, today's your day. Today's day of salvation. Now's your time to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. So listen to these verses, please. And then when I get done reading these verses, I'm going to pray a prayer with you. I actually want you to pray, too, to pray and receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. Okay? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God is raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteousness, the mouth confession means salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever called the name of the Lord shall be saved. Real simple. It's confessing Jesus Christ, Lord. I mean it from your heart. Pray this to me, please. Say these words and receive Jesus Christ, your Lord, today. God, I come to you. Just say this. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you're raised in the dead. Jesus I receive it today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you that your blood's cleansed me from all sin. And thank you, Jesus, now you're my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you to protect me that I'll never go to hell. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer? Good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You could email me if you'd like to at jessierisministries.com. We're going to have church on the phone tonight. That's a conference call at 7 o'clock. you'd like to join in, call in. A phone number and access code should be right on our Facebook page. And that way you'll be around some other, uh, other saints. Also, we have communion during that time, so prepare for that. And if you just pray that prayer to receive Jesus, I'd like for you to go buy a Bible and start reading the Gospel of John. Find a church to attend to that's going to teach you about Jesus and the only way to heaven. A pastor in church, tell them you receive Jesus Christ on social media. Pray to prayer with a minister to receive the Lord. They'll help you grow and develop spiritually. Take advantage of that. Get involved with that church with your tithes and offers, support, and attendance. And just be a blessing to help get God's word out, his gospel, in Jesus' name. Really enjoyed being today. I want to encourage you to keep watching, keep learning about who you are in Christ Jesus. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mike. We love you. We're praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.